Hey folks, in this scene we're going to take a look at wiping between different AOVs within our composite. So Nuke is very good at compositing. What we're doing here really is an editing task. So often I would write out clips from Nuke and bring them over into a video editor uh, such as Premiere or Avid or even over to After Effects and you can lay out each clip and the timeline is much clearer. These days we can do this in Nuke Studio as well. But I'm going to take a look at just doing it within Nuke itself. So here's my diffuse pass and I color grade that. So I shift the U uh, to make it more blue. And I'm going to put that over the specular pass just here. Okay, so there's a few different ways we can go about doing this, but probably the most straightforward is to use the copy rectangle. I want to wipe the, uh, the specular over the diffuse. So I'm going to hook up the A here to the specular and I'm going to hook up the B to the diffuse and we can take a look and we can see that we got this rectangle here and the rectangle is going to determine the uh, the wipe. So here you can see as I move it across, there's the diffuse pass and here's the specular pass kicking in. So I want to animate that moving across from the left to the right. So I'm just going to set my X to zero and my Y to zero. And that will start the uh, rectangle in the bottom left hand corner. And then I just need to set these to the width and height of my composite. And in this case, that's going to be 1920 by 1080. Okay, so now my rectangle is the full size of the composite. And really what I want to do is I want to animate it going from the left hand side here over to the right hand side. And to do that, what I need to animate is this value here, the 1920. So if I start to animate this going from the left here over to the right, it will start to wipe in in a consistent manner across all of my AOVs. All right, let's go to frame one. And I'm going to set my aura value here to be zero. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to set a key. I'm going to jump over to frame 10 here and I'm going to set this over to 1920. Okay, and now we can see that over 10 frames we have gone and wiped in the specular pass over the diffuse pass. So we've done the wipe and we want to copy that across onto the next set of AOVs. So in other words, I'm going to wipe in the transmission in this case. Um, so I could copy this copy rectangle node. I could copy it across and, uh, and we could hook it up here. But in fact, what I'm going to do is clone it and you'll see why in just a little while. Uh, so to clone it, you can go to edit and you can come down to clone. Uh, the hotkey here will be, so copy as clones is going to be command K in this case, and then hit command V and it is going to be a clone. We can see that it's a clone because there's a little C up here in the top left hand corner. So it is a clone of the original one. Now in this case, I'm going to hook up the A to my transmission here and the B is going to be the diffuse plus the specular. And now if I take a look at this node, by setting my viewer to it, you can see that, there we go, there's the transmission going in on top of the diffuse and the specular. So that's the basic setup and I can copy this copy rectangle down throughout my graph here. What I want to do next is take a look at placing each of these uh, little clips one after another. So you can see that, if I go back and look at the first copy rectangle we did here, we can see that across 10 frames we have this wipe. And because we cloned that, if we take a look at the second copy rectangle, we can see that, yeah, that is bringing in our glass here at the front over 10 frames. So what I want to do is lay these out one after another. So the first one here will play across frame 1 to 10, and the second one here will play across frames 10 to 20, and so on. And the way to do that is to use a frame range node to start off with, and then an append clip. So with my copy rectangle selected, I'm going to hit frame range here. And the frame range that I want to capture is frame 1 to 10. After that, I'm going to put down an append clip. Uh, we can think of this as a little clip on a timeline. If, if you're familiar with editing software like Premiere or even After Effects, um, you can imagine these as little clips on the timeline. So here's our first clip just here. So I want to set up our second clip down here. So what I'll do is I'll copy the frame range. I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to make it a clone. This time I'll just do it up here. So copy as clone and then V and that's copied as a clone just here. And I'm going to hook that guy up just like that. 
and then I'm going to create another append clip. I'm going to hook the number one of the append clip here up to the first little clip and I'll hook up the number two here to my frame range. So set your viewer to append clip two and what we should see happen is as we go from frames one to ten we're pulling in a pen clip one so that's our first clip and there you go there's our spec over our diffuse and as we go from 10 to 20 yeah there we go there's our transmission coming in okay so that is the overall setup here and we can copy all these uh one after another to bring in all of the aovs now one other thing that you'll probably want to do is you'll probably want to have a little bit of text just to explain what's happening as each AOV comes in. So we can do that using a text node. So I'll just put down a text node just here and I'll set my viewer to it. So I'm just gonna hit one. Now I'm gonna just click up here where I want the text to be. I'm gonna put it in the bottom left-hand corner. And I'm just gonna type specular here. And I'm going to hit M just underneath this for merge. And I'm going to hook up the B to my specular layer just here. So I'll go back and just select the text. I'm actually going to just move it down so it's in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, I don't particularly like that typeface. So I'm going to set it over to Futura, Futura here. And maybe we can go to Futura Light or something like that. That looks a little bit neater. That is my text for this particular specular layer coming in. And all I have to do then is take the A for the copy rectangle and put it to the, that's merging in the text. Now, if I go back and I take a look at my copy rectangle, we'll see that over those 10 frames, yeah, it brings in specular first and then we get to see the layer. I can just copy this. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make just a little bit more room here, just so it's easier to see what's happening in this part of the composite. And I'm gonna copy these guys so command C, command shift V to paste them without them being hooked up. And I'm just gonna take the B here and hook it up to the merge. And I'll take the A going into the copy rectangle and hook it up here so my text is included. And obviously for this particular setup here, I need to change it from specular to transmission. Or you could call it refraction as well. And if I go and take a look at my append clip two here, I can now see that across the first 10 frames, we get specular. From 10 to 20, we get transmission. So that's the basic setup. Now, the reason that I created the copy rectangle as a clone and the frame as a clone is that if we go and play this back, you'll see that actually it's happening quite quickly little bit too fast maybe to actually be able to read it you'll often have to go back and tweak the length of each clip and by cloning these two nodes here it makes it very simple so select your copy rectangle the first one i can hit one just to set my viewer to this node we can see that the keyframes are running from frame one to ten here i want to stretch them out and that's what a dope sheet is for so jump over to our dope sheet and here's our copy rectangle and you can see it goes from frame one to ten I'm just going to grab the end and drag it out to 20. And now we can see that it is happening over a slower period of time from frames 1 to 20. Now most likely for these kind of setups you'll want each wipe to be exactly the same length. So that the edit will be consistent. And because we cloned this, the second copy rectangle here, if I select that guy, we can see that the frame range for, for this node has been updated as well. Let's go to our frame range. Now our frame range was taking frame one to 10. So I need to update that as well. So let's change that to take it from frame one to 20. This guy will be updated as well because it was a clone. So now if I go and take a look at the final append clip, I can scroll through it here and you can see frame one to 20, the specular comes in and frame 20 to 40, the transmission comes in. So by cloning these two nodes here, it makes it very simple to go and update the length of time for each clip. Now I can go and just copy these down to the rest of my graph to bring in more and more AOVs. Then next AOV to come in would come in from frame 
40 to 60, the next one from 60 to 80 and so on. And once I have them all wiping in the way I want, I'd write them out to disk.